Hey, what's up everyone? Hippo TC, and today we're gonna do a different kind of video. I've made so many guide videos throughout the years where I've covered things for the basic sloops from navigating your ship, how to get prepared and how to survive kind of fighting. I have top tips and tricks for PVP. I have the videos out there that kind of show you all the little, little things that most people don't show you. I mean, we have content for absolutely uh, everyone and everything, but something that i wanted to start doing was kind of taking some in the moment things that have happened live on stream and show you some maybe new strategies that you can use to apply them in your adventures out on the seas and maybe help you come out on top and so with that being said this video is going to focus on how to escape after stealing treasure now i don't know if you're like me but oftentimes i find myself with my hand caught in the cookie jar of some pirates that i have stolen a chest of legends from or some other various treasure and you know they take it personal when you steal treasure from them i don't know what it is about treasure that they love so much other than it's beautiful and shiny and amazing but people tend to get bothered when you steal treasure and oftentimes people need to know how to get away after you've stolen that treasure so that's what this video is going to focus on and we're going to do this in a new way that i'm experimenting with so if you like this style for a guide video make sure to let me know in the comments below and i'll start making more content kind of like this but we're going to take a live stream moments and then kind of recap them together as a community and talk about what maybe worked, what maybe didn't work, uh, and all of that. So this isn't going to be your basic like, oh, turn your sails into the wind and run into the wind type of video. But I'm going to show you some of the things that I tried to do to get away from a decent crew after we stole a Fort of Fortune. There was also a Reaper where we stole uh, some treasure from the Reaper, and I used a rock to try to bamboozle them uh, with that. And then yet another one is an example from a fort of the dam stack that we stole chest of legends from and sank everybody and then another reaper came in into the picture and yeah it was fun and we're going to kind of cover that here so all that being said let's jump into uh these parts and how you can kind of use some unique strategies to get away after you've stolen the treasure um to go sell make them make them trace us for a little bit we got we got all the goods baby should be able to make it. The turning right. just a tad. I'm gonna hit mine. Are you gonna hit yours? Yeah, I can hit mine. I hit mine. I hit mine. So after we stole this Fort of Fortune from these guys, we attempted some double boards on them, and they were watching their ladders pretty decently. We tried all the, you know, the standard tricks, the jukes on the ladders, the blunder bombs, the fire bombs, and all that kind of thing. But they did a pretty good job at watching their ladders. So quickly we realized that boarding simply just wasn't going to work and we had to try something different. And that is something that you're going to find from time to time. Like you're going to run into crews that are very good at watching their ladders, know exactly how to defend against it. And there's just simply won't be anything you can do to get on board. So when you reach that point the question is what do you do and that's where we started to have a little fun now of course first before we did any of this we made sure to sell the chest of legends and they were very close this was probably a little bit too risky but we did manage to get it sold and uh then we started to kind of experiment with some fun strategies that you guys can use to see if that will help you get away after you have stolen the treasure so the first thing we did was just kind of a classic let's hard turn the helm here drop the anchor hit him with some chain shots they were pretty close behind us and this would give us the ability to knock down their mask get some chain shots on them get some cannonball hits on them and then one of us was going to go board and we were able to pull it off pretty good they went directly into the broadside of our sloop we got some really good chain shots on them and then death was able to board them they did manage a pretty good chain shot on us though to be fair but this is actually a pretty decent yep. strategy dropping their mass hitting them with blunder bombs hitting them with fire bombs causing a little bit of chaos and then getting one of their one of their people on board one of your people on board their ship giving you kind of that opportunity to board drop the anchor and cause a little bit of chaos uh, but like I said, yeah, they got a pretty decent shot on their chain right. shot, but I was right there. I was able to get it repaired really quickly, and we were on our way.
Oop. Oh. Managed to. Absolute legend, Oop. dude. Food veg, food veg. I got food vegged. You did great. You got their anchor down, or did you get them? It looks yeah, like you got their anchor down. down, dude. Good job. Anchor's down, they're on fire. I got food vegged, though. I was, I would have healed myself with that. Hey, mango. you did fantastic, sir. We're vominosing away. So after that, these guys were still determined to get us. So we were going to try to see if we could find a mega keg. Now, something you might not know is if you sail or past these smaller islands and you find yourself a skeleton captain, and if you kill him, he'll drop orders. Those orders oftentimes have uh, mega kegs that you can dig up, and these can be used for all sorts of shenanigans, obviously. So in this case, we found a mega keg. We had both already sailed past it. So the enemy had already sailed past this island. We had already sailed past them, but we wanted to kind of hit them with this mega keg. So what we ended up doing was we finished digging up the keg and death had this idea of turning the boat around using the sea fort kind of as a distraction and then coming back towards this island. And that's exactly what we did. Turn by the sea fort, gonna use the sea fort. I must cover and I'll try and swing back around to your island. All right, so it was Shiver Retreat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just using the thing here as cover. They just, ooh, they nearly crashed into a rock. There it is, dude. Nice job. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah. That was perfect. Beautiful. Right. We got the thing back up. They're gonna get us on a, a port on the side shot. They're pretty far. They might shoot out a border. Yeah, yeah. I am on that. Yeah, one of them's about to get into a cannon. So after this, I'm gonna have you take a left turn, okay? All right, all right. Let me know when the turn, and I'll turn. Not yet. We got. We got to watch what they're doing. Go a little to the left so you don't ram the island at all. I'm fine. <laughs> right. Try going left. On it. What side are they going on? They're going on right side. Right side. Yeah. Hard left turn. Hard left turn. Yep. Yeah, I'm heading towards Crooked. Hello, I have this keg, gentlemen. Oh. Yo, how the <laughs> F, the ship. how the F did they knock me off the ship with a lit keg? Hold on a second. This game sometimes. <laughs> you flipped the ship? Are they flipped flipped or are they just, oh, they're no, both no, they dead. No, back up. Uh, see if he's graphic, you know, see, see if he's got them back up. Uh, I think I'm very confused by that. Well, hey, that regardless, that was a good play, Death. Good job. Good job navigating the ship, my friend. Now that little excursion gave us a lot of distance between us and them. So there's always this thing that I love to see if I can pull off and it's using kind of rocks to hide your ship and the enemy will just sail on by and that's what we attempted here so in this situation what you want to find is a large rock something that you can kind of bring your ship around and maybe hide around and put some distance between you and your pursuer so that's exactly what we did we had a pretty good distance of between us and them and we used the sea dog tavern to hide our boat now i will say uh, i think it almost worked perfectly um, but I think this guy, you'll see it here in a second, but he, he happened to fall off at an inconvenient time and he spotted what we were doing. But either way, I would say overall, it worked pretty well. And if he had not fallen off his boat, we would have been able to get away with this easy peasy. But yeah, you find a large rock, you cut off the line of vision, bring the boat around, get a scout to see where the enemy is coming from, and then time it right to bring your ship around the rock and they won't even know where you went. And this can be used uh, really effectively to get away from a pursuer. So that's what we're talking about. How do you get away? How do you escape after you got your hand caught in the cookie jar and you've stolen some treasure? So you can kind of see how this one, uh, this strategy played out. 
They might come right through the rock or they might come right in front of us. Yo, thank you, Jeru. Stay on the boat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> you just literally flew over my head. <laughs> All right, drop sails. Drop sails. Drop sails. We're going to go through the archway. Wait, no, stop, drop, drop anchor, drop anchor, drop anchor. <laughs> Okay, uh, turn hard right, hard right, pick up, pick up anchor now, pick up anchor, uh, and drop sails, pick up anchor and drop sails. We gotta go through the arch. Uh, oh, we're... It's because we were in that turn. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I gotta go through the archway. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, straighten out, straighten out, straighten out, straighten out, straighten out. Yeah, yeah, there's moon in the water. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Oh, yeah, he sees us, he sees us. He's Who sees us? Right there. Oh, damn. <laughs> what? One of them was in the water looking out for us in case we did such a play. Damn, almost got away with that chat. <laughs> Now, one of the more common strategies is the good old fashioned fort. Uh, we call it, it's the fuzzy maneuver. I, I'm not sure who came up with the original strategy. I've seen fuzzy use it oftentimes. I've used it forever as well, but it's just bringing the enemy around a, a fort and using the cannons on the fort to kind of bamboozle your pursuer. So as soon as death sailed around the, uh, as soon as he sailed around the island, I had him turn to kind of force the pursuing ship to make a decision, whether to chase him around the island or more likely by him turning to the left, what it was going to do was cause them to turn early as well, thus lining them up perfectly for my for my cannons. And in a situation like this, having good cursed cannonballs, chain shots, all of that stuff is really going to help. But you can nail a chain shot, putting the enemy ship in a pretty bad position, and then you can just, you know, hit them with a bunch of cannonballs. And that's exactly what we did here. Now, in this case, they were able to eventually get away. But uh, I used the uh, I used the cannons from the fort to board them later, and you'll kind of see how that played out. But I was able to eventually stop them, and this was the final straw for this particular pursuer. They gave up after this. All right, we're still going. They've got their master pad. Damn, we don't have anything. I think he just got knocked off, chat. game give it to me come on what is that man i got meg meg oh no no meg all right Come on! All right, I got them boarded. Right, right. I'll keep. I'm gonna get the ship out of sight as fast as possible. I've got Meg on me though, so I'm gonna try and do my best to get as close. I'm gonna get close to Ancient Spire, get the Meg to despawn, and I'm gonna head north. Okay, that's <laughs> the weirdest sword fight. I got a couple. Of those. All right. <laughs> uh, and they're in a storm right now. What a weird sword bite. Yeah. Shh, come on, get close to fire. Let's go. Can I not knock this down right now? Ah! 
that stang win, man. What a crazy weird thing. <laughs> Now, that fight lasted quite a while, allowing Death to put significant distance between us and them and to just ensure that we could get away with this treasure. What we ended up doing was putting all of the treasure on a rowboat. We scuttled the ship and then we just rode it into Morrow's Peak Outpost and sold all of the treasure. They cannot see a ship. No enemy can see a uh, rowboat from that great a distance. So if there's no ship, there's no reason they would think that we went to Morrow's Peak Outpost, which is why we ended up scuttling and just rowing the rowboat in. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh. Hello, sir. Hello there. The stonks. Now, this bamboozlement, uh, as I am calling it, was basically we stole some treasure from a Reaper 5, and needless to say, they were not happy about it. It wasn't a lot of treasure. I think we just, you know, they felt disrespected, so they wanted to get their sweet revenge on these little sloop that we were. And there's this these rocks that are just kind of near, I think it's called Mercy's End Sea Fort. The sea fort just east of Crook's Hollow. And there's, there's, I call them Tri Rock. And there's these three rocks that just have this huge point and you can sail between them. Uh, and we, I wanted to see if this would work. So what we ended up doing, I'm going to explain my thought process. You're going to see how it plays out here in a second. I'll let it play out in its entirety. But basically, we brought the sails up to bring them in close. And then as soon as they got close, we dropped the sails. And what we did worked amazingly but we sailed through tri rock using the harpoons we looped around to the left and then we sailed again through tri rock now how this worked was the idea in my head was they would chase us around tri rock not realizing that we had cut through it and by the time they realized that we had cut through it a second time we would have put significant distance between us and them so this is kind of how this strategy played out but this is an example i think of using your environment to your uh to your uh, what's the word i'm looking for advantage it, using your environment to your advantage it's something that I don't right, see a I'm lot of other again. players do, but again. often it can get you the W. It can get you that win that you need. It can get you away from your pursuer, whatever the case might be. But this one was really fun to kind of experiment with. And as you are about to see, it worked really well. And I think most people don't expect something like this, which is why I think it worked really well. Let go. Let go, let go. Oh. Oh. All right, Harpoon on left again. Breaking. There we go. Okay, let go. <laughs> Harpoon on. Wait, I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we're good. We're gonna just go straight now. Okay. Are they? I think. I think we're good. Where are they? <laughs> Bamboozled. <laughs> Oh, they never Amazing. expect the tri rock, baby. Look spot. at them. Look at those nerds. Are. You nerds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love tri rock. Tri rock's the so best. Good. So funny. <laughs> Now, this next one I'm about to show you has a little bit of a buildup to the story. So basically what happened was we just stole treasure from a stack for the dam from a Reaper Alliance. Then while we were escaping, another new ship, a new contender kind of joined the picture. That default sloop right there was a very good crew. They, you can tell they played the game a lot. They were hitting all of their cannon shots. They were very good with their eye of reaches. And I mean, just everything. They were double gunning. They're very good crew. And immediately, me and Green uh, knew we needed to try something else. So we decided to board the weaker of the sloops and then using those sloop, uh, using the weaker sloop to attack the other crew. And it ended up working really well. And this is something I want to kind of point out. Sometimes the unconventional strategy, the unconventional approach will work out in your favor. In this case, we decided to use an enemy ship against an enemy ship and they were, again, as you can see here, they were nailing all of their cannon shots, absolutely destroying this ship. But it worked out in our benefit because they were destroying a ship that was pursuing us. So uh, we used that ship to attack them. And shout out to Green, 
who was hitting all of his shots. He hit his chain shot and then followed that up with a rigging ball. Because if you didn't know this, one of the best things that you can do is if you hit a chain shot, follow that up with a rigging ball, and it will basically force that mast uh, down because they can't catch it. it knocks whoever's on the mast uh, trying to catch it off of off of the mast. So as you can see here, we are able to kind of use this ship and absolutely destroy them with cursed cannonballs, regular cannonballs. And I'll let this kind of play out because this was an absolutely amazing moment. I was super pumped that it worked out. And shout out to, uh, to Green again for just absolutely uh, destroying it. He, I mean, he did so good here, so. I'm gonna lose angle here. To throttle. Oh my gosh. Uh, they're gonna get back here in time because respawn time's ridiculous. Tell me when they come back. Yeah, I just want to come back after a I'm gonna die here. I want to come back. So dumb. Respawn times. I think I was four people who were dead. Send me back, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go, dude. I don't even know how I survived, Green. I should have died. I should have died, dude. I'm, I'm proud of us. We attempted some different strategies today. It was kind of fun. It was. I mean, listen, those guys. We're doing the long chuck. I'm not a PvP lord. I'm not. I'm not good at this game. I've been telling you this forever. I play this game the way I believe a pirate would. The way I play is. You know? Uh...